Welcome back to the Project Blue Star campaign diary. So what's the team up to now? Well, it's preparation time at Earth Sanctuary World Nature Centre to get the place ready and running for the 2008 Earth Base Sustainable Living Market Festival. You better get a move on team. Uh, hello, how are we doing? It's the 29th of October 2008. Uh, we're on the northernmost circle of Earth Sanctuary. This is the, uh, the Global Rescue Village just behind us. Uh, we've got four wind towers to put up, 500 waters and uh, only a couple of days to, to get this cement sorted out so it can be stabilised. How are you going there, Danny? Very good, sorry. What's the story here? Well, uh, it's nice and warm and uh, just building up the summer, but we're just putting the, uh, the holes and they need to be a bell shaped in order for the uh, cement to have a uh, greater stick to the ground. So uh, we've just got four of these holes to dig and uh, yeah, we should be right. Yeah, Beauty, the, uh, the wind tower is about 15 uh, feet high, about as high as that tree over there. So uh, we've got some, some work to do. It's 7.30 plus in the morning and uh, I think it's nearly about 30. That's just something to look forward to. See you shortly. Earth Sanctuary's newest addition to its renewable energy array are four wonderful wind generators. With each turbine capable of generating 500 watts in power, the team are hoping that this new array could come close to running the entire sanctuary on renewable energy. But first things first, the foundations for the wind towers must be firmly in place and this means the team need to dig 16 holes before filling them each with cement which will help anchor the wind turbines from the forces of high speed winds. Now this is a real challenge for the team as the summer heat begins to kick in in the heart of the Australian outback. Welcome back to Project Blue Star. Look at that tea there, Dan. 2000, 2012. Well, I'm taking over the camera work. I'm the man in the hole. Professionals at work. Hem fibre in cement, a new age. Elephants have been doing this for years. Yes, they've perfected it. Beautiful work. A little bit of this. There we go. There we go. Building the anchor for our beautiful new windmills. Lovely. Before building a wind tower, it's important to place the supports in a position that will mean the turbines get the most out of the predominant winds for the region. This means they should be as free as possible from other large obstacles such as trees, which can reduce their efficiency. We now have to allow the concrete sufficient time to dry before setting up the wind tower and the turbines. Uh, fill up the last three holes. Feel like a golfer. Yeah, good on you folks, welcome to the very uh, next day after Halloween, it's the first day of November. We're on the uh, north uh, eastern field of Earth Sanctuary, we're about to erect the four uh, wind towers, they're 500 watts. Just four days ago we put the, uh, the cement uh, footings in so they're now dry and we can now put the poles up, the guy wires and uh, fix the turbines onto it. Uh, it should be a good day, we've got some... Um, some conduit to put in, also some wiring to set up all the way to the battery bank which is about 50 metres behind you and uh, we're going to do it one at a time so let's get started. Alrighty, we've uh, popped the first pole in and we've uh, lined up the guy wires so that uh, when, we, when we mount it, when we erect it, we uh, should be able to uh, catch with the guy wires and support itself. So, uh, uh, how are you going Joey? Yeah, good. Just pushing off the tie downs and then we can push the first bag. Uh, just fixing the three blades onto the uh, onto the main hub, which joins the turbine, which is on your right, the turbine. So it's a little bit like Lego, which is quite good, thanks to China. Each turbine has three blades that are cut at an angle to allow the central shaft to rotate when wind speeds get over several metres per second. The rotation causes a three-phase permanent magnet to generate power. And this is where the true ingenuity and gracefulness of wind power comes to fruition. 
Each turbine weighs approximately 30 kilograms. These models are built to endure wind speeds at over 200 kilometers per hour, and each one has the capacity to power a television, a computer, and several kitchen appliances, including fans and even a small air conditioner. Once the blades are fixed to the hub, the hub is then fixed to the shaft of the turbine and the wind tower tail is placed on the back of the turbine. The guy wires are secured first and then finally the wind towers are pulled up into place. Next the wiring has to be added so we can start using this renewable energy to power the sanctuary. When considering climate change, we also have to anticipate taking the wind towers down should wind speeds get too erratic. Extreme weather is certainly a factor we all have to prepare for. Alright, we're up to the second uh, wind tower. We start with the poles, uh, take these guys out and uh, then we assemble the head and fix it up. But Four days ago we were putting the cement footings in, it's taken four days to dry and uh, that's an important part because that uh, really does most of the work in holding it together. So uh, we're on to number two and uh, we're looking forward to number four. Okay, let's go and check out the, uh, the cement blocks or the anchors, how we go here then. Yeah, down. These are the anchors we put in a couple of days ago and uh, this guy comes in here. So, this guy comes in there, and there we go, recycled bolts, any beauty, laughing, oh yeah, let's get number two going. What's this bit, Jay? It's putting one of the blades on the new beauty prop. This is the which turbine? Number two. Turbine. F. F. Uh, S F Y C. Shift right here. Come on. Thousand eight. How long have we got to go? Four years. What's happening to the global economy, Joe? Going down like a bloody big gurgle. Okay. It's destabilising because it was built on quicksand from the very start. The bankers of the world. I thought they uh, needed a bit more cash to feather their nest and uh, the reality is kicking in for the fat cats of the world and, uh, and uh, I think you'll find that uh, most places around the world that uh, it's only the, uh, the ultra rich who are suffering because they can't have their caviar on their frog leg for supper. Too right there Danny, it's the lizards in the bank that keep people crawling but independent coexistence is the key to the future. Luckily, for those people who have consistent winds in their area, you'd be pleased to know that wind power is one of the most affordable technologies available. The best way to get started is to start small and dedicate your wind turbine to powering just a few appliances in your house. You won't believe what a great feeling it is the day you or your family get moving towards a sustainable lifestyle. Renewable energy is quickly becoming the essential resource of the future and as we enter a post-oil economy there has never been a greater time for people to get more active on the different technologies which can help to reduce our personal and collective impact on a finite planet. With little time to spare, the team need to get things right as the market festival is just around the corner. Stay tuned as the lead up thickens into a sustainable living showdown and no one needs a weatherman to know which way the wind's blowing.
See you all soon.